So having this table, we can now start doing some processing. So I'm using pipes, df pipe filter str underscore detect word x dollar. Right now, remember word is now a column within this uh, data frame, right? So we are saying filter, and then uh, we're going to put, you know, we are piping it. So it's obviously as if we said filter df comma string detect word, etc. Right, so this word would be treated as a column inside this table, and we are saying x dollar. Now recall that dollar means end of the uh, end of the string, which means x comes at the end of the string. In other words, what we are saying is filter and keep only those words that end in an x. So if you did that, that's the result you get. Of course, I think there are some more words. I'm not sure, but you can see how it happens. And of course, you're now seeing the index of where these words actually figure within your uh, data frame or within the table. So that's one kind of operation that we can do with uh, uh, when we have our data within tables and we want to use regular expressions. Okay, so that was one. Let's look at some more. Uh, we You can use str count, which is a function that tells us how many matches occurred. Right. So let's take a simple example first. So we're saying we've got this table, apple, banana, pear, I mean, uh, the a vector. I'm just showing you the example first with a vector. And then we are saying str count x comma a. That is, we want to find out for each of these words how many times the letter a occurs in the word. So the result is going to be obviously 1 for apple. It's going to be 3 for banana, a, a, a. And it's going to be 1 for pear. And that's the result you see here. Okay, so you can find this. Now, uh, why, how might you use str underscore count in the context of of an actual table. This was just a vector where I showed you the uh, the basic use of the function. Now in the context of a table, let's say we want to find out on the average how many vowels are there per word in our word uh, uh, thing in string R. But of course, word is already a column in our DF. So we'll use that. So we can just do, of course, here I'm directly using words. So I'm, we can do mean str underscore count words, A-E-I-O-U. Or alternately, if you want to use it uh, in the context of the table itself, I could say uh, df pipe, and then we could do mean str count word, and then we can have this. Okay, so you could do it uh, that that way as well. So here I've just shown it to you with uh, with the regular vector itself, not using the the table, but uh, you can think of uh, you know just repeat what we did here and figure out how to do it with table. So you would say, instead of filter, of course, you would do, uh, you do mean, and then you, you do this other thing. Okay, so you can try that out. Okay, now str count usually goes pretty well with uh, mutate. Now, if you recall, mutate is a function that we use to, uh, to add a column to a table, right? So str count obviously allows us to count and then we can count something and add on a new column. So in this example, we're going to take df, which is you know the word along with the index of the word. And we are now saying mutate vowels equals str count word comma a e i o u. That is for every word. Right now we simply have the word and its index i. We also want to put in the number of vowels in the word, and that's what this is. str underscore count word a e i o u. And consonants is, of course, the opposite, str underscore count word, not a vowel. Okay, so that is uh, how many consonants exist, right? So it's going to simply see where all this pattern matches, how many times it matches, and you get the count, right? So str, usually when you're doing regular expression matching, it only finds one match by default. But when you do count, it tells you how many times the particular expression matches a particular string. Okay, so now our df, of course, df is the result of this would contain all the columns that were in df plus it'll have two new columns called vowels and consonants. If you want to store the result, of course, you could you could replace df with this new one. So your df will, if you did that, your df will now have two additional columns. Okay, of course, here we didn't store the result anywhere. So you're seeing the result here. You've got the word, you've got its position i index, which we created earlier by using a seek along function. And then here you've got how many vowels, how many consonants. Of course, the two add up. 
So for example, the length of Abel is 4, which is 2 vowels and 2 consonants. Oh, sorry, 2 vowels and 2 consonants. This is 3 vowels and 2 consonants, 5, which is about, and so on. Right? So you could do things like this. Now, in the context of str count, in fact, in any context in which we are finding all the matches of a pattern on a string, we have to, very, we have to be very careful to understand that these matches will never overlap with each other. What do I mean by that? Take an example here. You've got str count, and I'm just putting uh, a string a, b, a, b, a, b, a, and we are matching for the string. This is our regular expression. I've given a very simple literal regular expression ABA, right? Now, actually speaking, ABA first matches here, ABA, right? And then if you start from the third character ABA, it matches once again here, right? But the first match covers ABA, okay? Now, the second match will not use this first A here, the, the, the third A here, because it's already been used by the first match. Right. So technically speaking, ABA can match as ABA here, and then you can start at this A and again match ABA, and then you can start at this A and again match ABA. Right. But since matches do not overlap, the first match will be ABA here, the second match will be this second ABA, and that's what you're going to see here. In order to verify, so it's showing us only two, not three, because technically speaking, there are three matches: ABA, ABA, ABA. Right. But if you remove the overlap, then there are only two matches. Right. In order to clearly see how this is going on, use the function str underscore view underscore all. Right. When you use str underscore view, it shows you only one match. But if you want to see all matches, you can use str view underscore all. And you see that in this particular case, it shows us only these two matches. And this particular match, A, B, A here, that doesn't work. Okay. Because matches in regular expressions don't overlap. That's an important point to, to consider. So let's see some examples. Here we are looking at words that start or end with x. And we're going to see two words of doing it. This time we're just going to do it on the vector words. Okay. So first method uses the, the vertical bar to say or. So that means we're saying str subset words and the regular expression says either it starts with x, which is the anchor caret starts with x, or x dollar ends with x. That is, it either contains this pattern or contains this pattern. Okay, so that will give us all the words which start or end with x. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Another way to do it, of course, is longer way. This is obviously the preferred way. Method 1 is preferred. It's simple. It's elegant. It's very concise. Does the job. In method 2, we con construct two expressions, right? So you've got str underscore subset words starting with x, caret x, and then you've got another words ending with x, x dollar. So you construct a vector consisting of all of these words. C, this is one bunch of words another bunch of words. So together we are putting it all together into one vector, right? And then we are doing a unique, right? So it's possible that there are some words which begin with x and which also end with x. There are no such words, I think, in our set of words, but it's possible, right? So we don't want any of these words to, to repeat. So we say unique, okay? This is a long-winded way of doing this. This is obviously a preferred way of doing this. And then you can do it in a third way, which is to, uh, you know, specifically construct, instead of putting it all together like this, we are saying start x is string detect words which start with x, words with end with x, and then we can do words of start of x uh, or start underscore x or end underscore x. Because remember, uh, string detect gives us a Boolean vector, right? So that's, uh, the, we are not using subset here, we are using string detect. It gives us a Boolean vector, so we can then use that to operate it like this. Okay. Now, of course, methods two and three are just long-winded. There's no point. One is far better. Right? When we are doing regular expressions, uh, it's always a good idea to see uh, what we can accomplish by using just regular expressions rather than going through other functions. But of course, there are some situations where you might need to do that. Uh, and also, when you're solving a problem, your goal is, in so is to solve the problem. So you get the job done, that's fine. You don't need to really worry about uh, did I completely use regular expressions or not? 
with time, as you use regular expressions more and more and more, uh, you'll start getting the confidence and the practice and the insight to construct powerful regular expressions that can get all the job done, uh, the whole job done with one regular expression. Another example, we want to say, let's say we want to find the words that start with a vowel and end with a consonant. Okay. So again, uh, of course, it's a good idea for you to try it out before you look at my answer. So pause the video and using all the prior knowledge that you have, try to solve this problem. Uh, and I'm going to show you two ways of doing this. Okay, so I'm assuming now that you have stopped the video and uh, tried out the problem. So now you can take a look at my solution. The first method is to have str underscore subset words starts with a vowel. So obviously you're going to have caret, a, e, i, o, u, any one of these characters, that's a vowel. And then we have dot, which will match any character, and star, if you remember, is zero or more times, right? So which means you have it start with a vowel, and then you have zero or more characters, which could be anything, we don't care what those characters are, and it ends with a consonant. And ending, you know that if it's a, for putting a consonant, you can say, you can list all the vowels and say not that. It's not a vowel, so it's going to be a consonant. So you again put it in square brackets. Okay, and then dollar because to say it ends, right? So it starts with a vowel, has zero or more characters, ends with a consonant. So that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is going to duplicate something we did in the last uh, couple of slides. We use string detect, right? So we are saying string detect. So detect, first of all, is start underscore v is going to be a vector that essentially tells you which are all the words that start with a vowel. n underscore c is going to tell you which are all the words that end with a consonant. And then we can do just, you know, words that start with a vowel and end with a consonant. So we are using the and operator here, the ampersand. So this is another way of doing this. So this is obviously long-winded. The first approach is far better. Let's look at something that is slightly more complicated. So we want to find out which are the words that have the highest number of vowels. Also, which are the words that have the highest proportion of vowels, right? This is just the sheer number. This is a proportion, right? So for example, if you consider the just the word A, that has only one vowel because the 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 word has only one character and it's got only one vowel, but in terms of proportion, it's very high. It's a hundred percent, right? So the number of vowels is simply how many vowels are there in the word. The proportion is the number of vowels divided by the length of the word. So first let's look at the count number of words. So that's easy. So we can just do data.frame word equals words and count equals, which is the column, that is the vowel count I could have called it, is str underscore count words and vowel. Somewhere in the word it contains a vowel, a, e, i, o, u, but then you're counting how many vowels it has, and then we pipe it to uh, a range in descending order of count, and then just head 10, which is looking at the first 10 rows. Okay, so you could do it like this. We're creating, we're using data frame, we could have used table. It, uh, it would be similar. Instead of data.frame, I would have just said table, and everything else would have been exactly the same. We are using dplyr, which works with data frames, also works with tables. Okay, now let's go on to proportion. So this time, instead of creating a column called count with str underscore count, we will now do a column called proportion or prop, in which we'll get the count of vowels, but we will also divide it by the length of the word. Okay, so this part is similar, word equals words. And then prop is str underscore count words a, e, i, o, u, which is just the number of vowels divided by str length words, right? So this is a vector telling us for each word how many vowels are there. And this is another vector telling us for each word what length, what is the length of that word, right? So what is going to happen is you're dividing one vector by another vector. So what the result you will get is a vector which consists of the first element divided by the first element, second element by the second element, third element by the third element, and so on. So ultimately what you will have is for every word, you will have its proportion of vowels. Right? And then as before, we are going to arrange it with descending order of proportion. And then we are going to take the first 10 uh, elements on it. Okay, so you could do this kind of processing as well using the uh, tables or data frames, dplyr, 
piping, filtering, arranging, all of these things, uh, you know, and uh, mutating if we want. We didn't do any mutate in this particular example, but we have seen mutate in other examples, uh, and we are doing all of that. In this case, we are not mutating, we are just creating a new data frame altogether.